Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for the full moon in Gemini. I almost uh, forgot to do this video and because it's occurring within a matter of days, I want to get this out here. And I also want to show you a new tarot deck that came in the mail via Santa Claus and that's what I call Amazon.com Santa Claus because I love getting packages from them. And this deck is called the Akashic Tarot, and it doesn't have the typical number of cards, 78. It has only 62. I was kind of surprised when I saw the cover. I wasn't expecting that. But um, I was reading a little bit of the booklet, and it supposedly is going along with other interpretations, not just the writer weight in terms of some of the cards. So it is different from some of the definitions or interpretations that I saw in the booklet. I'm going to pick a couple of cards from there and show you that deck. I'll also link it below in case you're interested. When I ordered it, I didn't see any other reading, uh, I'm sorry, um, reviews on the deck. So it seems to me that it just must have come out. And uh, so anyway, According to the Old Farmer's Almanac, which I brought up their website, this particular full moon is called by the Native American cultures the full cold moon. Some call it the long night's moon, and this is because it is the winter solstice uh, time frame of, you know, obviously the shortest day of the year. And, and of course, I'm talking about Northern Hemisphere, since I'm talking about North America. And, um, and yeah, because uh, there's a lot of cold, the winter is finally here, and so it's, it's just um, a, a very long night at that point. And then I heard, too, that it was a supermoon, and according to this um, Old Farmer's Almanac, it said it was the only... Let me see if I can find that. They say, the full cold moon rises on December 3rd, 2017, the year's one and only supermoon. It will appear brighter and larger than any moon this year. And I'm actually a little bit confused about that because I thought that we have had supermoons this year. I mean, I think even the full moon in Aries or Taurus was considered a supermoon, so I don't know about that. But whatever, right? It doesn't really matter. Anyway, I want to talk a, a little bit about this before I get into uh, showing you that new deck of mine. And at every full moon, what it means is that the sun is in opposition to the moon at the same degree. So this is a full moon at 11 degrees of Gemini, which means that the sun is at 11 degrees of Sagittarius. In the universal chart, when we're talking about the opposition uh, between Gemini and Sagittarius, the houses that are affected are the third house for Gemini and the ninth house for Sagittarius. And the third house for Gemini deals with all matters of communication. In today's world, Obviously, the first thing we think of is the Internet, but we could say the media and things like that. And this is kind of like tidbits of information. I would even like say that the third house deals with gossip and any kind of, you know, if you have phone calls, your, your letters and stuff like that. The ninth house, because it's a God house, it is dealing with issues that are more universal and also longer types of writing. <laughs> oh gosh, that's what happens when you live near a train. And um, so it's like, I think I heard it's, or read it um, said one time that the third house is like a news article and the ninth house is like a novel. So you have two types of writing, but one is like kind of journalistic and it's very short. And it's like quick bits of information. And then you have the ninth house, which is like an essay or a novel or something that's much longer. And um, 
in terms of like, if you're anybody who likes to read and you like poetry, for instance, and by the way, I used to do poetry slams, so I've, you know, that's part of my uh, past. And I was doing it when before it was like a thing too. I mean, I was I was like in the Chicago area, the part of that whole scene before it became mainstream. And there are a lot of poets who are Gemini's, like for instance, um, Walt Whitman. And but there's also you know writers in general are associated with Gemini and Sagittarius. So that kind of um, opposition shows that there's a lot of, um, of writing that is going on. Well, in 2017, a lot of the information that is disseminated is coming from the Internet. And we could even say, by extension, mainstream media. But even they are sometimes behind the uh, Internet. So I think I'm going to call this video Social Media Detox. And the reason for that is that full moons are times that it is suggested that we let go of things that are no longer serving us. And sometimes you don't have to let some, something go completely. But in the case of what is represented by Gemini, we are talking about gossip. We are talking about um, anything internet-based. But what, you know, because of the third house is the house that Gemini represents. But what value does it hold? And is, is the news that you hear, is it real? Is it fake news? Find out the origin of the term fake news. You might be surprised at what comes up. You may have your own connections that you've made, but you might find it very interesting to discover why uh, it, you know, began in the first place, probably like over a year ago. But the reason that this is so important right now is that we have Jupiter and Scorpio basically blowing the lid off of all of these secrets. And with, with the full moon, any full moon, you could get the exposure of secrets. With Gemini being <laughs> that uh, sign that the full moon is in, you could be talking about big time internet stuff that gets exposed and people are that are in the media are being the ones um, uh, hung out to dry. And they have to answer for their brainwashing. I mean, they... There, I'm not going to get into um, the media. This is, that's not what this video is all about. But it's, the reason that this is important is because we have to learn to take in information that can benefit us. And now, more than ever, there seems to be a lot of deception. And so with um, social media... Uh, one of the areas that people get deceived is in terms of comparison of other with other people. And this is like a personal kind of a thing. And a lot of people get freaked out when they are looking at other people's Facebook pages. Facebook basically admits to manipulating people and doing that for their own purposes. And, you know, trying to gain access to people's emotional states so they can better pull the strings to manipulate them. Just like the mainstream media may use uh, fear-based tactics to keep people in a state of um, low energy, you know, low vibes. And so this is where you come in. You have the power of discernment. And you can decide what you're willing to take into your consciousness. And so thinking about how Gemini is one of the air signs, and it deals with not only communicating, but thought itself, you have to um, decide if something that you're watching, listening to, uh, even talking about is enhancing your life or whether or not it's creating, even on a subtle 
vibrational level something that uh, can be construed as destructive or negative. And that's why um, it may be time to lessen the amount of internet that you engage in. Maybe it's time to even cut off certain behaviors um, that are online if you feel that it's not enhancing your life and it also is a time suck. One of the things about Gemini is that it's about, it, it loves trivia and it loves these kinds of like, you know, gathering different bits of information. And yet, what does it really accomplish at the end of the day? So um, it's, it's kind of interesting because usually we talk about detox, we're talking about something physical, and here we're talking about something that is informational. And maybe it can clear your head. I know I'm going to be aware of this at this full moon. Now let me look at some of the, briefly, some of the other um, signs and planets. So Mercury is in Sag at the 29th degree. So, you know, uh, by the way, oh, how could I forget? Mercury goes retrograde on the same day as this full moon. So Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. There could be something, a blast from the past about some kind of a new story that gripped uh, a particular Europe country. Uh, maybe it's a scandal <laughs> with uh, Jupiter and Scorpio, and that kind of blows wide open. Maybe it was kind of on the back burner, and now we revisit it for some reason because there's new juicy bits of information. Venus is at an early degree of Sagittarius. Mars is in Libra. And Mars by the Mars in Libra is still uh, in you know Mars is still in Libra and Libra is a sign that is very uh, communicative also because it is a fellow air sign. So that it that can um, sometimes Libra can come across as shallow as being very um, interested in the social graces and in being liked, being accepted, but not necessarily digging below the surface like Scorpio is wont to do. So you could have a lot. This could be a very um, buzzy you know, period where there's a lot being thrown at us and we may have to sift through all of this and things could be coming to a head even. There might be a lot of news stories that we're kind of like, you know, running through our minds. But as I said, maybe it's time to step back. Also in your personal life, uh, gossip. I remember talking about this with somebody and she wasn't, um, born in the United States and America was, I mean, uh, English wasn't her first language. And she thought that gossip meant that you are slandering somebody and telling uh, tales about people that aren't true. And that's not what gossip means. It means talking about other people. I wish I had that quote because I'm probably going to mangle it, but I, uh, Eleanor uh, Roosevelt said, small minds talk about other people. Um, average minds talk about uh, events and um, big minds or <laughs> large minds talk about ideas. And I would say your dreams. And that, that really is quite profound and very true that most people spend more time talking about things that are happening or other people than they do about what it is that they want to accomplish and their excitement about the potential for accomplishing certain things and their dream their dreams that you know things that they wish to see come to pass in their in their lives so that's something to also ponder and as I promised, I'm going to talk about this new deck that I received today. I couldn't even wait another day. I was going to do this tomorrow, but that full moon is fast approaching. It's called the Akashic Tarot. 
Um, the Akashic Records is kind of like the spiritual internet that ha that's like, you know, I think it's the Bible that calls it the Book of Records, basically recording everything, everything that we've done, every action, and it's just um, that everything in life um, is never um, not remembered. And that can freak people out, but it's not a punitive thing, in my opinion. It's just letting you know, and that's maybe how we access it when we um, remember past lives. It's because we're accessing the Akashic Records. Now, here is the back of the cards, which I just love. I just think that's so beautiful. It looks like a mandala. I haven't uh, really read everything in the booklet, so it's possible that... Um, there's more explanations about all of this, but I'm going to pick a couple of cards just for the heck of it to kick off our full moon in um, Gemini, and I did have the deck upside down. It doesn't matter. I don't think they do it like that. That one's called the One of Scrolls, and this one is Four of Keys clearing the way. So let's just read what it says. We're just, um, you know, looking at it symbolically and seeing what is happening. So one of scrolls. And I think that connects with swords. Uh, but th the definitions are different. Oh, you know what's funny? I did, um, I am going to put this um, in the reversed way because I guess they do read reverse cards. Now, uh, my <laughs> this is my rule about reversed cards. If the first one is reversed, I look at the bottom of the deck and then I, if it, the, the whole deck is reversed, then I just turn over the deck. Um, so I try to have it both ways. And the reason is because I do believe that certain cards are meant to come out in, in the um, reverse position, but I also believe that sometimes we grab the deck without thinking and it's upside down. Now, what if I had done a whole spread and everything was upside down? That would be silly, or at least to me. Okay, so uh, this is perfect, though, for the Mercury retrograde. It says... Your ambivalence in waiting for the perfect time may have sabotaged things. This card reverse so shows that you're having trouble taking action in a certain direction because of confusion, indecision, or inertia. It's up to you to bring this phase to a close. It will take greater effort of will and focus, but you can renew your purpose again. Don't worry that li your life's journey will be delayed forever. With your determination, you can make the decisions to get back on track now. And, you know, it's interesting because during Mercury retrogrades, people are encouraged not to take new actions. And everyone has to decide, you know, how much you're going to go along with that. My feeling is that if you can wait and you really think that based on past experience that Mercury retrogrades affect you, then they probably will. At least uh, you will make them happen that way because... Uh, you will create that reality for yourself. But if you're somebody who doesn't like superstition, doesn't like to um, be forced to, to not do something that you feel compelled to do, then you're going to want to, to get back on track and not allow these astrological events or anything to keep you from doing what you came here to do. And obviously not being reckless and being very careful about anything that you have plans to do, whether travel plans, the big things with Mercury Retrograde are travel plans and signing contracts, maybe launching things. But if you feel like this is something you have to do, then I feel like you should do it. Um, I don't feel that you should ever like keep yourself um, held back because of some astrological transit. 
But like I said, it's always good to make sure that it resonates with you and that you feel good about it, that you don't feel like freaked out or that it's really not good timing and you're just trying to do it anyway, force things. Okay, the other card is the Four of Keys. And it says, This card is a strong signal that it's now time to take significant action to remove an obstruction in your way. It may be in your personal life, in a relationship, at work, or with a creative project. You must be clear-headed, so be sure to temper your action with calm and forethought. If you are too urgent and excitable, you may waste your energy or even cause damage. On the other hand, if you're overly gentle and cautious, you won't clear the way completely. Be determined and strong as you work to remove the obstacle that blocks your steps. With time and your attention, the way to your dreams will be open. And by the way, with um, the full moon in Gemini, some of those obstructions could be thoughts that you hold about what life is all about. Maybe you have certain beliefs that need to be dropped. And of course it's easier said than done. But just being conscious that you have them in the first place can be the first step. And, and sometimes I feel like it can really clear the way by thinking that it's the thing that you want to do, that you don't have to go through a long drawn out pro process all the time. Okay, you guys, well, I just wanted to kind of give you a bit of an um, uh, introduction to this deck and also to tell you what's coming up for the full moon in Gemini. I hope you enjoyed this and take care of yourselves. Bye.